Today I featured Katy Perry's、um, "Hot and Cold." So this song describes an unstable romantic relationship caused by the boy's mood swings. Hot and cold, yes or no? So as I said last time in in last week, engineers normally don't care about the bad romantic or bad bad relationships, but we do care about materials and structures. So today we will see hot and cold. Uh, and how temperature change or temperature swings can lead to unstable materials or structures. Okay, the obje- objectives today are listed here. So we will explain and calculate the temperature effect on materials and structures. Those are the two、uh, central equations to、uh, calculate the thermal strain and thermal deformation. Then we will also introduce some basic design concepts. In last week, we have talked about the mechanical properties of materials. We have known that to be called mechanical properties, this parameter、uh, has to be a constant for a specific material, meaning that it doesn't change because of the change of、uh, loading level. For example, if、uh, we look at stress, Right, we have known that the stress depends on the level of loading applied to a material or a structure. Right, normally, the higher the loading level, the higher the stress. So the stress is not a property of material. Then, how about strength? If you look at strength, strength is the maximum、uh, level of stress that a material can withstand. So, prob the the strength is a material property, a mechanical property of.、Uh, Of this material, so apart from that, we also defined several mechanical properties of materials, and they are E, G, and nu. Right, the modulus of elasticity, modulus of rigidity, and Poisson ratio. And using these parameters,、uh, we can correlate the stress and strain of a material. Right, those are known as Hooke's law. Okay, so our if you look at、uh, normal stress and strain. Okay, our normal stress、uh, sigma can be calculated from E times normal strain, and our shear stress can be calculated from G times shear strain. Okay, those are the one dimension, the simple, the basic Hooke's law. Okay, and using these equations, we can predict the stress, uh, predict the stress from strain, or predict the strain. And then deformation from stress level or loading level. Okay, then my question is: Is that possible? A material deforms without loading. Okay, based on the Hooke's law, we have known that we have to add something, add add a load to a material so it can deform. Okay, so is that possible? This material deforms without loading. We should、uh, realize that the Hooke's law describes mechanical behaviors. Then, how about physical behaviors? The materials also have some physical properties,、uh, maybe not mechanical, some other physical properties like a thermal property. So here we will show that、uh, physically, if you are not loading this material mechanically, you are just heating it or cooling it, will this material deform? Yes, right. So that is a common sense that normal materials can expand when it's heated, and it can shrink when you cool it. Right. So this is common sense. Okay. In mechanics materials or or physics, we use、um, coefficient of thermal expansion to describe the thermal expansion behaviors of materials. The temperature change causes change, either expansion or contraction. In shape, area, and volume in materials, the strain caused by temperature change is known as thermal strain, epsilon t. Right. So、uh, mathematically, this thing, this、uh, thermal strain, can be calculated from a、um, coefficient of thermal expansion alpha times delta t. And here, delta, delta t is just the temperature change. And we know that. Uh, when the temperature increases during heating, and we call it a positive temperature change. 
due to heating or temperature increase. Right? So negative delta T means cooling or temperature decrease. Okay. So no matter how, uh, when we talk about a strain, it equals the length change or deformation over the initial the initial dimension or initial initial length. Okay. So in linear uh, scenarios, one dimensional scenarios, okay, this uh, epsilon t equals what equals delta t, the deformation linear deformation due to temperature change over l, the original length of the material. Uh, knowing this, we can also calculate the thermal deformation. This uh, delta t equals what well, equals epsilon t times l. And the l is the initial length of the element. Uh, expand it, we can get alpha t uh, alpha delta t times l. Okay, in this slide, I just uh, uh, listed the thermal the coefficient of thermal expansion or CTEs of uh, their linear values okay in one dimensional cases the linear CTEs of uh, normal engineering materials uh, for example the aluminum alloy is CTE is 23.1 micro strain per degree Celsius right? and that of uh, concrete is around 10 uh, times 10, 10 micro strain per degree Celsius. You can see that this unit, meaning that this is thermal expansion coefficient, are normally very small. They are on the level of uh, micro strain per degree Celsius. Okay, so these linear uh, coefficient of thermal expansions are only valid when you have a one-dimensional element like a like a uh, a string or a thin bar, etc. But when you have a cube, three-dimensional body, uh, you have to use a uh, volumetric coefficient of thermal expansion to uh, describe its overall behaviors. Of course, if you have a tube, if uh, if you have a cube and you only care about uh, the uh, expansion along x direction or along y direction, or along z direction, you can still use the linear coefficient of thermal expansion. But if you want to describe the overall behavior, then this alpha v volumetric uh, coefficient of thermal expansion should be used. So when this material is isotropic and uh, the deformation is very small, okay, those are the two preconditions. Okay, the volumetric coefficient of thermal expansion equals three times linear uh, coefficient of, of thermal expansion. Okay, This equation is derived as shown below. Just strictly speaking, before deformation, this volume of the cube equals what L, the set length, cube. Right, so after deformation, it becomes uh, V prime equals L plus delta L cube. Okay. So this thing after deformation can be calculated. It, it can be expanded into four four terms. And because we assumed that the deformation is very small, meaning that the delta L is much much smaller than the L. Okay. So in terms of a higher order when you have delta L square or cube, then this term so will be much, much smaller than the uh, than this former two terms. So we can ignore these later terms. And approximately, this volume after deformation equals this. And you get a V here, and this is the volumetric uh, volumetric coefficient of thermal expansion, three times alpha. Okay, I hope you have realized that this thermal strain or thermal deformation is totally different from the elastic strain or elastic deformation in nature. Okay, the elastic strain and deformation are just because of loading, mechanical loading. Right? When you load it using some 
force of、uh, newton、uh, kilonewton etc. pounds height, is, it will deform and give you deformation a strain that is elastic strain and elastic deformation. The thermal strain, you don't have to add any mechanical load. You just need to change the temperature, heat it or cool it. Then it will be change. It will be caused by the temperature change. Okay, not mechanical loading. Okay, these are two strains, two types of strains, deformations of different nature. Okay, we normally use、uh, epsilon t、right, to denote thermal strain and epsilon e to denote elastic strain. It's caused by force. Okay,、uh, and we will also use the same uh, subscripts uh, to describe the deformations. Okay, like delta t. And delta e. Okay, now let's just summarize these equations.、Um, thermal strain can be calculated from alpha times delta t, and elastic strain epsilon e can be calculated from Hooke's law. Right, it's a stress over e, stress over modulus of elasticity, and the total strain can thus be calculated by adding these two terms. When you have a material, have a structure subjected to、uh, mechanical load and、uh, temperature change simultaneously, then you will you want to predict the strain or deformation. Then you, you need to combine both of them. Okay. Then keep this in mind.、Uh, be familiar with these equations. Then we will go through several examples to see how can we use them to solve some engineering problems.